Sorry, I gotta keep this short. You may never forgive me for what I took from you, and I can't go back in time and fix all the mistakes I made, but maybe I can leave something for the future. A legacy. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Monarch, the legacy of monsters has dropped, and it might not be what you think it is. Come on, let's talk about it. Lucky, you're so bad. So, a lot of people are not going to get this. Monarch takes place after the 2014 Godzilla. We open up, we see John Goodman reprising his role from Kong Skull Island. He is playing Bill Ronda. Now, we get into the Rondas because this entire show is about the Ronda family, whether you know it or not. So, we run into John Goodman, taking a video of himself, further being chased by a mother long legs and a mantle claw. Uh, he throws his bag out in the ocean, which stays out there for about 50, 60 years. It's found in the Sea of Japan by these fishermen. And we cut to modern times. Uh, it, it's kind of flip-flops a little bit. It's really kind of hard to maintain the pacing and where we're going if you don't know everything that's going on and not quick enough to pick up what's going on. I do like the fact that they tell you everywhere they are and what year it is. After this stuff, we start on a plane and there's some commentary on the plane about after the Godzilla attack. It's all about giving us the illusion of safety. Now, while leaving the airport, Kate has a flashback. You get the idea that he has, she has some sort of PTSD from Godzilla's attack in San Francisco, which she was very close to, which is completely understandable. Now, I laughed at this cab commentary uh, about conspiracy theorists and podcasters. It was pretty funny. People always find a way to profit off someone else's tragedy. More profit than tragedy. What do you mean? San Francisco was a hoax. They did it with CGI. But her whole life falls apart. Now, her father's died, and she's gone to Japan to resolve his issues over there because he has an apartment, all this stuff in Japan. She gets there. She finds out that daddy's been living two lives. He has two wives, and she has a half-brother. Uh, this doesn't work out very well for her. <laughs> now we cut to Kazakhstan in 1957. We see the doctors and Lee Shaw following a radioactive trail. Now Lee Shaw is played by the son of Kurt Russell. 5,000 millirems. 6,000. Well, we're on the right road. His name is Wyatt Russell. I will say that they look very similar. Uh, and I think both people do a good job in this show. Now, Kurt does not show up in this episode. We're only doing episode one here. But he is in episode two. And they play very similar together. Now, there's also some dialogue about Hollow Earth. Uh, I think it leads to that. And it's also brought up later on in the series. Okay. We come back proving the network is real. And then our theory is not just some insane fantasy. Yeah. This could make everything we've sacrificed worth it. Which is kind of weird because they didn't really touch on that until Kong versus Godzilla. But I mean, that's always been a part of Godzilla lore. Anyways, as far as I remember. You gotta give it to you guys and make it look easy. Raising a great kid, being able to keep Monarch together, that's no small feat. What we've done, we've done together. Now they get to this plant. It's supposed to be some sort of Chernobyl. They're following this radiation and they actually run into this kid in the woods and he's like, oh, it's a wives tale. This didn't happen. You know, whatever. So I will say this, the subtitles on this show are hit or miss. 
when they have two people conversing in a foreign language and then one person interprets back, they will not give you the subtitles. Uh, I didn't particularly like that. But so they get to the plant and there's no radiation. Well, we already know, and Lee even says it, these things think the A and A bomb is appetizer. They suck up radiation. So it's a good chance that there are Titans there. Now, while this is also going on, Kate has had a flashback due to a Godzilla alarm, and she's been locked in a shelter. And we get to see what actually happened to her. It's actually pretty sad. Now, after this interaction, Kentaro, Kate's bro half-brother, convinces her to go to this office that the dad has. Now, she's in there looking around, and you kind of allude that she knows more than she's letting on because she keeps saying what you're seeing is not real. All this other stuff, she runs her hand across this giant map on the wall and finds a safe behind it. Now, there's like a whole thing with them arguing back and forth, him telling her to stop it. Uh, or he can't pick it if she locks it out. Seriously, stop. I'll never get it open. How did you do that? Your birth month, my day. Your mother's month, my mom's day. And it turns out it is a combination of both wives and kids' birthdays. Now, inside the safe, they find the bag that Bill Randa threw off the edge of Skull Island when he thought he was going to die to the giant spider. Here is my problem. These are the grandkids of Bill Ronda. They don't recognize his name on the bag. And we'll get to that again. That is, there is, there is a few issues in this that I think are uh, uh, weird. Uh, it's not necessarily story breaking, but there are some stuff you're like, well, you should have caught that that's your last name on the bag. I mean, plain and simple. Well, inside that bag, is a bunch of hard drives, reel-to-reel -reel hard drives, you know, old school stuff, 1973. Uh, that's where Bill Ander throws the bag in the sea at Skull Island. I know some people have complained that, well, how could that bag hold up? There are weatherproof bags that will supply, sur survive nuclear blasts, stuff like that. You're talking about top of the top of the era. Military technology is what Monarch had, and that's what they were using. I could see it surviving, you know, 30, 40 years in the ocean, maybe not 60, but pretty close. So once they have the hard drive, Kay convinces Ken to go have these drives checked out. Well, that's where we enter May. May is a black girl. Who cares? Uh, living in Japan. She's a coder. She likes getting audio file stuff, cleaning it up, and reselling it. I know people that actually do that. So we can keep this professional. Is that what this relationship is now? Transactional? You can tell that they're estranged lovers. They have a conversation. She ends up helping them out. And all of a sudden they unload all this Monarch stuff, which this has now turned into a spy thriller movie. This is now less about monsters. And I say this softly because there are monsters in this series, but this is more about Monarch and, and the Randa family. It's not about Godzilla. Someone tried to run it through some online decryption software. It's got a monarch recognition code embedded, so it pinged back to us. Hey, those are Japanese. And I'm fine with that. Uh, they, they're laying a lot of groundwork here. They're putting a lot of effort into the story. Uh, we all know, you know, like Godzilla movies, there's not much Godzilla there. Uh, I'm fine with that. It, but it does kind of feel like Born Ultimatum or something like that with the, with the way this scene progresses. When she hacks the hard drives, it does kind of feel like that when she hacks the hard drives and all of a sudden Monarch's picking it up and they're turning it over to this guy. And this guy's now going to Japan because the only ping they can get is Tokyo. 
So it really does feel like a spy thriller at this point in the show. Now, they changed that again. We'll get to that. Kate explains that Monarch was there taking pictures and photos while Godzilla was wreaking havoc on San Francisco. Like, they were already knew he was coming. And you really, really get the idea that Kate knows more than she lets on for the fact that she says she doesn't speak Japanese. Then while her brother and May are speaking Japanese, she just starts talking Japanese and come to find out she said she quit talking it when she had the falling out with her father. Now, she also explains at this point in the show that her father came to her at the camp after G-Day. Left her some bus tickets, rented her a car, did all this stuff, and he had to go somewhere. He could not stay there, and they had a falling out. Now, uh, this adds more mystery or whatever to the plot. Uh, trying to figure out, we know he's a Ronda. What part was he involved with Monarch? Was he counter-Monarch? Was he working behind the scenes? You know, granted, you get that his family started Monarch. And we also got that from some scenes with the Rondas and Lee where they're talking. You get this when they're on the trail of this next monster or whatever. I got to give it to you guys. You make it look easy. I'm raising a great kid. Being able to keep Monarch together. That's no small feat. What we've done, we've done together. You really get the idea that they are the people that started Monarch. And this is where it began. And this is the family that started Monarch. And this is the whole story, but the story we're going to get. Now, she also mentions that days later, she gets a phone call that his plane was lost in Alaska. The plane was never recovered, no body or anything like that. Now, while this is going on, there's photographs popping up on the PC, you know, just, just coming up, different Monarch stuff. And she's like, stop. 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 Go, go back. That's my grandmother. Yeah. She died when he was little. And it's her grandmother standing in what looks like a footprint of Godzilla. Now, after we see this, we cut back to the Rondas and Shaw checking out the eggs. Holy crap. Well, there's definitely something down there. Some new form of Muto. Oh, they look embryonic. Well, Kiko is over there getting DNA swabs and the ground falls out and all these like little trill bites. Oh, it's stunning. Now, our trilobites, all these little trilobites hatching these eggs. They're running to get out. Well, Miko doesn't fare so well. They all latch onto her and make her so heavy that no one can pull her up. And they lose grip of the rope and she falls into the hollow earth. Or what we would presume to be the hollow earth. Here are the credits. I have some problems with this show. Uh, I have more problems once we go through over episode two. But yes, her not recognizing her own last name on the bag is kind of a, a, a sign uh, like she should recognize that we get no discussion of their Rondas other than she says, that's my grandmother. Other than that, this is very spy thrillery. You do see Godzilla. You do see these little trilobites. Uh, you do see, uh, Dr. Kiko die. It, it is pretty exciting, pretty adventurous. I will say I'm up for episode two. I've already watched episode two reviews coming for that, but it's just too much to talk about and keep it in a short form video. They do a lot of world building here. They explain a lot of things in this show. Um, I'm hoping it goes somewhere. Uh, we're at this point where the show could still flop. My overall rating for this show is a 7 out of 10 because I'm expecting more as this comes out. I'm expecting more energy, more spy thriller, more on Monarch, more on the Rondas, and I'm really expecting more monsters. We'll see how much monster we get in this show. I don't think we're going to get as much as a Godzilla movie, unfortunately. But you also have Godzilla minus one coming out in the next month. As a matter of fact, in like two weeks. Godzilla. 
Minus one. And then you also have Godzilla X Kong, the new empire, coming out next year. So there's a lot of hype for Godzilla right now. I'm a huge Godzilla fan. I remember being in preschool, sitting on the floor, playing with Legos, looking up at a black and white television on the wall, watching Godzilla as like a four-year-old. It's actually ingrained in my memory. So I'm super excited to see what comes out of all of these shows and movies. And I hope we get a little more from the trailers and stuff. It looks like we're going to get a few more monsters. I'm super interested. At this point in the show, I'm interested to watch the next episode. There are certain elements that could drag it down. Uh, we will see what they do with it, but I am excited to watch the second and third episode and see where this goes. Uh, I should have review for episode two out in a couple of days. Make sure to drop a like, sub, comment down below what you think about the show, if you're interested in watching it or not interested, but that's what I got. Have a good one. <laughs> Joey, is that you?